Good morning. I'm Charles Osgood, and this is Sunday morning. On this Labor Day weekend, it may be that no workers are more deserving of a break than airline workers. Many of them have reason to feel even more stressed out and put upon than the irate airline passengers do of late. But as Martha Teichner will point out in our cover story, there's one airline, Southwest, that seems to have the happiest employees in the sky. And the company with the stock ticker symbol LUV is passionate about plotting its own course. They board their planes the way you might herd cattle. They won't assign you a seat, but they just might sing to you. Time to stay seated, finish up your booze. And they're proud to say their passengers come second. That's no way to run an airline, or is it? Southwest Airlines, later this Sunday morning. From airline workers, like airline passengers, have had a tough time of it lately. But in our cover story, Martha Teichner reports on an airline where job satisfaction is sky high. Now tell me this isn't unusual. See the woman in the hat and the round sunglasses? The one everybody's kissing and hugging? All right, let's see you. That's Colleen Barrett, president of Southwest Airlines, at a company outing in San Diego a couple of weeks ago. And that's Gary Kelly, the CEO. How are you doing? Would you dare do that to your bosses? Would you want to? They all want to get their picture taken with you. Well, that's okay, you know? I think some CEOs have to travel with bodyguards. You think about that contrast, it's just something you can't take for granted. So, the People difference... working together, people loving each other, uh, people respecting each other is... Yes, you heard right. Now listen to this. It's family, they love us, we feel the love, and it shows in the way we behave. We love to get up in the morning and go to work, because we know that this is the payoff. They mean it. Southwest Airlines has been profitable every year since 1973. No other U.S. airline can say that. It's never had a layoff. It's never cut salaries. In fact, it's one of the best paid, most highly unionized airlines in the industry. What makes it so successful? Okay, a smart business plan. But something else Southwest deems crucial. So you put your employees first, and if you take care of them, then they will take good care of your customers, then your customers will come back, and your shareholders will like that. So that it's really a unity. Herb Kelleher, chairman of Southwest, is legendary in the airline industry for doing things differently than the other guys. Our planes pull into the jetway, board passengers, and pull out again in 10 minutes or less. Before he found himself Southwest's pitch man, Kelleher was a lawyer retained by the airline to get it off the ground, a fight that took him all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. It seemed the last thing Southwest's competitors wanted to see was a low-cost upstart doing nothing but flying around Texas in and out of Dallas Love Field. In 1971, the Love airline, get it, took off. Sexy flight attendants in hot pants? We cringe now, but Southwest needed attention and got it. You can have a low-cost carrier and people still don't fly it because they don't know about it. And uh, so the shtick kind of fit in with getting known. By 1978, Kelleher was running the place. His way of doing that was to bring his affectionate, sometimes outrageous sense of fun to management. That's Herb. So is that. Everybody at Southwest calls him Herb. I enjoy not the theatricality of it, but the opportunity it gives me to be with our people. That is really the joy. Malice in Dallas in 1992 had to have been his goofiest stunt. Instead of going to court over who had the rights to the advertising slogan, just plain smart, Southwest or a South Carolina aviation sales company, Kelleher agreed to settle the matter with a charity arm wrestling match. Somebody's got to lose! Yes! We're saying, hey, wait a second. We're having fun. We want you to have fun, too. 
So, on any given day, during the final approach into Dallas from Houston, you might hear flight attendant Cassie Plourd singing you down. Time to stay seated, finish up your breeze, pass the next to Delta, cause now we're coming through. Plourd has been with Southwest 18 years. So has Franny Oberman. What's your best joke? My best joke? Oh, um, I... Maybe I'm addicted to the pressurization. <laughs> Today, Southwest Airlines has nearly 34,000 employees. It flies to 64 different cities, has more than 500 planes, and is the nation's sixth largest airline. But what makes Southwest Southwest? The fact that it turns flights around fast came about by accident. Because in the beginning, when it had only four airplanes, it had to sell one of them just to stay in business. And they went out to the ground ops folks and said, guess what? We're going to maintain the same schedule that we had with four aircraft, now with three aircraft. Management consultants Kevin and Jackie Freiberg have written a book about Southwest. And of course, everybody said, well, how are we going to do that? They said, well, you're going to have to turn an airplane in 10 minutes. And of course, the average turnaround time at that point was more like 45 minutes or an hour. Here's where the relationship the airline has with its employees comes in, what's known as the Southwest culture. In the majority of businesses that are truly successful today, they've got a really definitive cause that everybody rallies around and believes in and serves toward and, and works hard for. That, I, I think that's critical, and Southwest got that 34 years ago. Turnarounds now average 23 minutes, but that's still better than half the time it takes other airlines. True customers, as passengers are called, are herded onto planes in three big groups. They don't have assigned seats. But most of the time, they don't seem to mind. So why Southwest? Convenience, the price, and uh, I, I like the people. And when he asked his pilot's union to agree to a five-year pay freeze, Kelleher took one, too. He figures it cost him as much as a hundred million dollars in compensation, but bought him trust. To me, uh, 70, 100 million dollars, what difference does it make? There's nothing in particular I'd like to do <laughs> that I can't do. If you walk down any hall in Southwest's Dallas headquarters, there are thousands of pictures, glimpses of what love looks like at the Love Airline after all these years. Southwest's culture? It bears the likeness of Herb Kelleher and Colleen Barrett, who are in the process of retiring. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome aboard. Employees and analysts alike agree that the future of the airline depends on preserving it when Kelleher and Barrett are gone. When I first came here, I thought, where's the Kool-Aid? It was that different. And you, it was sort of like, this can't be true. And it's catchy. It's catchy. I feel like it's self-perpetuating because when you bring that culture to the customers, it makes your life easier. This is the secret. This is what every Southwest employee is expected to do. Well, they have to practice the golden rule every day. Um, first with each other and then with our passengers. Um, they have to um, serve because they want to. They have to smile because they want to, not because they have to. Hi! Sounds hokey, doesn't it? Actually, at Southwest, this is hokey. No, not the airplanes on their heads. A hokey is this little carpet sweeper. Hokey day is when volunteers show up unannounced at the door of arriving aircraft. It's hokey day! To give flight crews a break. <laughs> Rachel Jacobs, the team leader, right. has been a Southwest flight attendant for 15 years. This was her day off. <laughs> yeah. I gotta get rid of these.